Hello everyone and welcome to Veeam Logics Lab Manager video demo series. My name is Jacob and David. I'm a director of technical services here at Veeam Logics and today I'm going to show you how to install Veeam Logics Lab Manager 381 specifically for VMware vSphere vCenter 4 formation. That was a long name. So let's start with the requirements. So VM Logics Lab Manager has several requirements. First, we'll start with the main component, the Lab Manager server. We require Windows 2003 Service Pack 2 in order to install our Lab Manager product. Another server is required and recommended to install our VM agent. The VM agent is the component that communicates with the vCenter server and executes all the cloning and deployment commands you will uh, define via the Lab Manager server user interface. And of course, we have the VM hosts, which are your virtualization platforms. We support vCenter in two modes. Uh, of course, one is the vCenter cluster in vSphere. And of course, we have the standalone mode. Today, we're going to show you how to install Lab Manager and configure it with vCenter. In order to install VM Logics Lab Manager with vCenter, um, the requirements is to have vCenter 4 Update 1, at least one ESX 3.5 or ESX 4 Update 1 uh, in a cluster formation, and the licensing requirement for the vCenter is to use vSphere Enterprise License. And of course, on the network requirements, you will require uh, static IP addresses for your ESX, your vCenter, and all the other components. But since we're going to use VLAN IDs, uh, the network switches require to have trunking enabled. So please ensure that your ESX servers are connected to network switches with trunking. And once we have all the requirements, all you need is the files to install VM Logics Lab Manager and the IP Zone router. IP Zone is VM Logics fencing technology. We leverage that by providing you with a virtual machine that acts as a router. So please ensure to download that when you download your VM Logics Lab Manager installer and the appropriate version for your hypervisor. We have uh, IP Zone for ESX vSphere 4, ESX 3.5, and Hyper V as well, which is another platform VM Logics support. And of course, the last section is the database. You will need to download Postgres SQL database uh, from Postgres SQL. We support uh, the specific version of 8.3.7 for Windows 2003. So I have all the files already in my systems. So let's start by first installing Postgres. I'll start by extracting um, Postgres into the next folder and open the installation. Select English, click Next, and of course Next on the welcome screen, Next on the screen as well. You can leave everything here as default and select Next. And now um, you'll be prompt to create a service user. Uh, please ensure to define a password that you will remember um, when needed. And click Next. And in this screen, you check this option, Initialize Database Cluster. Now you'll need to define the super user, the database super user password. So very important, make sure that you write down this password because you will need it when you define VM Logics Lab Manager. And we click Next, leave everything as default in this screen as well, and start the installation. Uh, it's also recommended to check our documentation. There are some uh, recommendations on how to configure SQL, Postgres SQL uh, for best performance with VMLogix Lab Manager, so we highly recommend to check our online recommendations uh, available under our documentation. So this is the page docs.vmlogix.com slash lm-8381 and if you look here under the installing the Postgres SQL, there is configuring the Postgres SQL. So make sure to follow the setups for best performance on your server. And you can see that uh, Postgres was uh, done and let's just launch it and create a database. Uh, you go into the Postgres folder and select the pgadmin and um, 
Now we'll need to log in as the Postgres user. Click close, connect. And now we're going to create a new database. Uh, we're going to call it Lab Manager. And this is going to be for uh, VMLogix Lab Manager. And very important, make sure to change the encoding to UDF, UTF-8. And click OK. And we all down. Uh, and note, just make sure that whatever text you entered here, it's a case sensitive. So when you enter this name in VMLogix Lab Manager, uh, ensure to enter it in the same format. And we all down with our database set up. And now let's go and set up VMLogix. And I have the installation here and click next. Very install, of course, accept the license. This is the default directory. And now you're presented with option to install Lab Manager as a service or application. Of course, uh, if you install Lab Manager as an application, someone needs to log in into the system. So for best performance, install Lab Manager as a service. Uh, in case the server reboots, Lab Manager will always load uh, after a reboot, accidental or planned. And just for the sake of this demo, we're going to install it as an application. And we're going to click Next. And start installation. Okay, we are back. So uh, the installation is almost done. It uh, took a uh, couple of minutes and it is over. And now in order to uh, launch the Lab Manager, since I launched this application, you'll have this shortcut. This is all going to be available if you installed Lab Manager as an application. If you install it as a service, you'll be prompt to execute the service and launch it. Uh, I'm going to launch this application and you'll note on the background here at the bottom, I have uh, my Lab Manager server. So I can right click it and launch the dashboard. So if Lab Manager is not installed as an uh, application, for example, if you installed as a service, you will not have this button. So in order um, to access the Lab Manager, you open your browser and you go into the following uh, URL. It starts with HTTPS, column slash slash. Uh, the IP of the local machine could be local host, for example, or the actual IP of the machine, column 8443. Everything here can be changed. And I'll show you that later. So I'm going to access the server and start by defining, uh, defining a password. As you can see, I was uh, entering a weak password, which is not recommended for security. And I'm going to use the same password to log in into my Lab Manager server. So as you can see, I'm in the main screen. And I'll start by uh, the default action. You know, I have the license available, so I'm going to upload my evaluation license. You can do it directly from here. You're going to browse to your location. This is my file. Open and update. So let's start by defining our SQL server in Lab Manager. So in order to see the full user interface, it's recommended to expand it. You can click on this uh, button, which is more, or scroll down and click on the same button, which generate the same result. And in order to define the database, we go into administration admin tasks and we'll select migrate current database and in this screen you will need to enter all the information of your uh, Postgres my Postgres SQL is installed on the same server as lab manager so all I need to do is define a local host as the address and enter the database name again remember it's case sensitive and the Postgres SQL uh, username. This is a super admin password that, that I remember um, mentioned during the installation. So let's enter that. And click Migrate. Click OK on the confirmation window. And if you see this information, it was successful. And now we need to do start the Lab Manager. Since my Lab Manager server is installed as an application, I'm going to close this window and select Close Stop at this prompt. And once Lab Manager is gone, I'm going to relaunch it and my settings are applied. This concludes our first part of the installation video. Please join us to our next video covering how to install the VM agent components in Falonize installation. So thank you for watching and looking forward to see you again.